messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. Bob O'Rourke, otherwise known as Beto, he was doing a talk the other day and he had a question from the audience about whether or not he thought the Electoral College should be abolished. Here was his answer. To answer your question, yes, let's abolish the Electoral College. Um, we, we, um, the night after the presidential election in 2016, Amy and I were, were talking to each other and we were like, how are we going to explain to Ulysses and Molly and Henry, who are now 12, 10, and 8, mm -hmm. that the person who got 3 million more votes just lost the election. Mm -hmm. And then we were talking to each other, and we're like, how do we explain that to ourselves? Like, what, why is this okay? Um, this is one of those bad compromises we made at day one in this country. And there are many others that we can think of, and they are all connected, including the value of some people mm -hmm. based on the color of their skin, there is a legacy and a series of consequences that have persisted and remain with us to this day. And this conversation about how we repair the damage, how we make things right, and how we keep from committing the same injustices going forward is squarely connected to the reason that we are all convened here today, and that is fixing our democracy. So yes, if we got rid of the Electoral College, we get a little bit closer to one person, one vote in the United States of America. All right, so Bob O'Rourke giving a thrilling history lesson that is, well, completely false and void of all history, gets just everything wrong about the Electoral College in that little segment. So here's the problem. First of all, it's pretty easy to tell where this is coming from. It's very easy to tell that this is essentially just sour grapes. I mean, he basically admits to as much in the beginning of that clip. You'll hear him say that, well, it was about the the last election when we started talking about this. And so in other words, he never had a problem with the Electoral College until it caused Hillary Clinton to not be president of the United States. And this is true of all Democrats. It's just Bob O'Rourke actually just said it and verbalized it. The problem that they have with the Electoral College is that it has helped Republicans. And that's the issue that they really take with it. They wouldn't have a problem with it per se. It's just, well, Hillary Clinton's not president because of it, ergo, it must be a problem. This is nothing but sour, sour grapes after the 2018 election. But here's the problem, too. Rather than actually currying the favor of voters and trying to work within the system, they would rather just break the system down. They're saying that, well, the system that we have is causing problems for us or has caused problems for us in recent history Ergo, there must be a flaw in the system. That doesn't mean necessarily that there's a flaw in the system. That means that you need to work within the structure, work within the rules that were set to be able to do it. I mean, that would be like saying uh, if you your basketball team loses a game, saying, well, the problem is the, the hoops were too high. We need to lower them to eight feet. Well, the other team had a 10-foot hoop too. Doesn't matter. The problem is the way that the game is designed. Yeah, but you knew at the beginning of the game, you knew going into it that they were going to be 10 feet high. But we only practice with eight feet goals. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You knew the goals were going to be 10 feet high in the game. Why would you practice with eight foot goals? See, they're acting as though this great injustice has happened to them because they lost the election. And the problem is they're really just sore losers. They can't believe the fact that somehow, and granted, I was a little bit in shock myself, that Donald Trump actually somehow wound up pulling off winning the presidential election. But that is an excuse to fall back, do some self-reflection, and then get better. Not to say, well, the game was unfair. The game was rigged. And what's so hilarious is we had over and over and over again Democrats telling us Republicans have to accept the results of the election. They have to accept them. They have to accept that it was fair. And the reason they were saying that was because they believed that Hillary Clinton was going to win. They say anything that, that Donald Trump is suggesting about there being voter fraud, well, that's just un-American and that it really attacks the integrity of our institutions, which, by the way, at the time, I said it when he was running, 
I agreed with that sentiment. However, they're saying the exact opposite now. Somehow this, changing the Constitution in the way we do a presidential election, is not attacking the Constitution, is not attacking the institution of the way that we elect presidents. That's not saying that there's a problem with the system. Their standards change based on who is saying it and whether or not they like that person at the time. And it all boils down to a problem that Democrats have with the way that our system is designed. We are not a democracy. He said, we need to get closer to one person, one vote. Well, yeah, getting rid of the Electoral College would do that, but that doesn't make it a good idea. That is not in and of itself an argument to the superiority of a direct democracy. In fact, if you're looking at Madison's Federalist Number 10, you will see why, and he makes some very powerful arguments in that particular letter, as to why democracy itself is evil, why it always ends in tyranny. We're not supposed to be a direct democracy. We were never designed to be a direct democracy. We are a representative constitutional republic. That's the form of government that we have. If you don't like it, then you need to advocate for a full-on democracy and everything, which, by the way, is a horrible idea. But if that's what you want, you need to be honest about what you actually want. We're not a democracy. We're a republic. Anyway, I love this one analogy that he used in that clip. Well, how are we going to explain this to our kids? How are we going to explain that the person that got three million more votes lost? It's actually very simple. The same way that you explain a baseball game to a child. If a child walks up to you watching their first baseball game and saying, I don't understand. The team that hit the ball more didn't win. That seems unfair. Then you explain to that child, well, it's not the team that hits the ball the most that wins. It's the team that makes it home the most. It's the team that gets the most runs. See, that's the thing. When you're talking about the contest of an election, everybody knew that the Electoral College was the way that the president has decided going into it. So you would describe that the same way that you would describe the results of a baseball game. It doesn't matter how many people got to first base. It doesn't matter how many people hit the ball. It doesn't matter how many amazing catches the other team made when they were on defense. The only thing that matters is how many times a person was safe at home. One team could have two hits. One team could have 100 hits. As long as that team has more runs, doesn't matter how many hits the other team got, they won. Everybody agreed on those terms long before Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump went at it on the presidential stage. Everybody knew that was the way that it was going to go. And to blame the rules and to blame the system is essentially them just having sour grapes about losing. That's how you explain it to a child. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated. Furthermore, he has his history completely wrong for a number of reasons, because what he's trying to do is he can't actually explain why the Electoral College is bad. And so the only way that he thinks he can do it is he has to default to one of the only things that Democrats know how to do, and that is claim that things are racist. If anything is unfair, well, it must be because of racism. If anything that they perceive is incorrect, well, it's because of racism somehow. But on this one, he's completely wrong. He's saying that this was a compromise that we made from day one. Well, if you're looking at the Constitution, there were a lot of compromises made. Some of them were based on the institution of slavery. This was not one of them. And the way that you know that is because he's trying to lump the three-fifths compromise and everything else into the compromise for the representation of states, and he's trying to lump it into the way that we select presidents by the Electoral College, but that's not the case. This was a compromise not between slave and free states. This was a compromise between large states and small states. Because what was going on is the smaller states were saying, well, if we just base it on population, if we just do a popular vote, then certain states that are smaller are not going to be recognized and our votes are essentially going to be worthless when it comes to electing a president. And they were right. It was a legitimate complaint. So in the same way that they made a compromise between large and small states by having a House of Representatives and a Senate, they also made a compromise when it came to selecting the executive branch, the president. And so in both the legislative branch 
and the executive branch, they decided we need to figure out a way to represent the states as sovereign institutions and the population of those states. That's how the Electoral College came about. It represents the population because the amount of electoral votes you get is based on your population, but it also gives some representation to, you, the representation to you as a state, as a separate sovereign entity. That's how the system works. And that's the reason that it was set up the way that it was. Now, Democrats, as a general rule, don't like this because they would rather us be one giant homogenous nation where the states are essentially just the only thing that matters for them is your address. They're just meaningless names, and you don't really have sovereign states that have individual powers. They would rather centralize power in Washington, and that's the reason that they really hate the institution of the Electoral College, and also the reason that they're trying to get rid of other compromises that were reached in the name of small states versus large states. There are, and granted, this is not a majority, but there are Democrats right now that are saying we should abolish the Senate. We should just have a House of Representatives. That should be the entirety of Congress. This is actually a talking point that some Democrats are starting to latch onto because they hate the idea of states as sovereign entities. And part of the reason for that is because they would rather consolidate as much power as humanly possible in Washington, D.C. And by the way, on this accusation that it was somehow tied to slavery, here's a really big problem with making that argument. Here are the states at the time of the, the Constitution's ratification. Here are the states that would have had the fewest votes. Delaware, Vermont, Rhode Island, Georgia, New Hampshire, New Jersey. Now, what do you notice about that? What do you notice about that list? These are the smaller states that would have benefited from not having a popular vote. These are the states that would have seen the most benefit from having this representation in the Electoral College. Anybody pick up on it? There's only one state that was in the South, and it's Georgia. Georgia is the only state that had that small population that would have greatly benefited from having an Electoral College. Now, let's look at the larger states, states with the most electoral votes which would have been disadvantaged. In other words, it would have been better for them representation-wise to just have a popular vote. Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, North Carolina. In that list, you have Virginia, arguably the largest slave-holding state and the most pro-slavery state in the Union at the time. And you also have South Carolina, which was another big slave state. So on the list of states that got the most advantage from the Electoral College, you've got a bunch of tiny New England states and Georgia. And on the states that were disadvantaged by the Electoral College, you've got larger states, two of which happen to be really big slave states. And so this idea that the Electoral College was supposed to institute slavery and it was done as a compromise between slave states and free states to try to keep slavery as long as possible that's easily disprovable by looking at the history. The states that would have got the most advantage from it would have been the small New England states. It just doesn't make any sense at all. In fact, you can also look at the actual results of what happened because of the Electoral College. And if you're looking at the pre-slavery era, there were actually two that did not win with the popular vote. John Quincy Adams and Abraham Lincoln both very outspoken anti-slavery presidents. They didn't win the popular vote. But the point is, if it had just been a popular vote, whoever wins the most votes gets the presidency, neither of those two men would have ever been president. And they were very outspoken anti-slavery presidents. And so looking through this, this assumption, this fiction is the only way to describe it really, that the Electoral College was put in to institutionalize slavery and it was done to try to help slave states, there's absolutely no truth to it whatsoever. Here's the problem. If you don't like the Electoral College, we can have that debate. I'm willing to have that debate with anybody. But suggesting that it is the product of racism, that's just a lie. And the only reason that they're repeating that is because they know that they have to figure out a way to get people drummed up and to turn sentiment against it and they can't do that on solid, honest, 
political grounds. So what they have to do is they have to lie about it and paint it as though it's some kind of institution of racism, which is just simply not true. It's a completely dishonest way to have this discussion. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet, totally made up.